I'm guessing most people probably missed this one. Some will have chosen not to watch it. But Kazuto Ioka, one of boxing's top, top operators. I'm saying put this guy in top 10 pound for pound. Not a problem. He remains WBO super flyweight champion of the world. Ryoji Fukunaga brought the fight. Very game. Another very good workout at this fourth weight class now. But he definitely lost. This was a bit easier than it was against Mexican Francisco Rodriguez Jr. Ioka wasn't pushed back as easily. He had more obvious, sustained moments of dominance. We had those smooth transitions between offense and defense. That silky composure that he's renowned for. Definitely won this one 8 4. Uh, you still get those highly amusing YouTube comments. You'll find them. Anytime there's a semi competitive fight, there's always one numpty screaming robbery. And you get that kind of thing with such regularity. You do wonder whether you're being trolled. Every competitive fight, oh, it's a robbery. You've got to be able to differentiate, if you're going to follow the sport, between you gave it a good go, but you did lose. You don't win fights on effort alone. And Fukunaga was just a bit too scrappy with his work. He was willful. He did win some rounds. He did lose the fight. Ioka's combinations. Uh, he was always firing right back when he got tagged. He's not unhittable. He'll get hit sometimes when he comes up, uh, up close. But a difference with this fight and the one against Rodriguez, I thought, was he didn't let Fukunaga have the last say. He always came right back in twos and threes and fours. Always being an imaginative guy with those combinations. Never getting stuck in any one mode of fighting. Which is kind of the hallmark of the really top fighters, I find. They can box a bit, then they'll mix it up. They never get gassed on any success they have. They just keep mixing it up, confusing the opponent, remaining in control. So whether we're talking about a Lomachenko, an, an Usek up at heavyweight, or Ioka down at Superfly, a lot of these top guys, they always vary the power of their shots. They are trying to score points, and they're always trying to position you. Like, trying to hurt you always seems to be the last goal. With the more amateurish guys, or you could perhaps even say most pros, they probe with the jab, they've got the rear hand cocked because they're always trying to set up some kind of knockout. And they jump at any opportunity where they think they've got an advantage. These top guys are always just touching you there, here, there. Maybe they'll hurt you, but then they'll go back to busting you up more with the jab. There's this really effective reserve where they don't want to give up their own advantages. Although it has to be said, if there is a little bit of a sour point with this performance, it's that we didn't really see Ioka hurt his opponent. Now, is this just going to become a trend at £115? He was never a lights-out puncher guy. What Did the performance against Tanaka kind of flatter him? Maybe. But... Not the biggest guy at this weight. Doesn't seem to be really hurting people in his last two fights. Is that going to be a bit of a problem? Nonetheless, Fukunaga was another southpaw, which is ideal preparation for the Ankaha showdown. Whenever it happens, hopefully, please, sometime this year, I've still got to go with Ioka. The variety, the class... The ability to switch up what he's doing on the fly. That should probably confuse the very strong, but more fundamentally basic, Filipino. But what do we all make of the current state of affairs in boxing's best weight division? We have got the third fight between Gonzalez and Estrada that should be happening around March. Hopefully we'll get Ioka and Cajas. And perhaps the winners of those two fights will then fight. But then where does Rungvasai fit into all of this? The older bulldozer of a tie. Of all the potential matchups, particularly those first two I mentioned, 
Which one are you most looking forward to?